Hi everyone, this video is an extension of the 2D shoal analysis video that I have done a few weeks ago and many of you requested for extending that 2D to 3D by defining spheres instead of circles and uh, we'll go through that in a methodical way. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, again, this would be an amazing time to pause, hit the subscribe button. While you're there, if you're feeling extra generous, find that thanks button. Okay, now this is, again, I'm not going to go deep into what shoal analysis is. Hopefully you're watching this video because you want to learn, you know, you relate to this term. And typically it's done in 2D, but nowadays it's more common to collect 3D data sets. So how can you perform this 3D, obviously using Python uh, in this video. So first of all, again, quick explanation of shoal analysis. It's an assay or a workflow that's performed to measure how neurons or dendrites or axons, uh, you know, they branch out from the cell body. It's a way of quantifying that. Now, in what context is it usually performed to compare neurons morphology between different cell types or conditions, and also to kind of assess the changes in the structure of the neurons during the development of a disease. There are various reasons why these are a couple of uh, the reasons uh, I just mentioned. Now, what exactly is it? Well, I, I just crossed out 2D part and put 3D here, right? So what you do is you put a series of concentric spheres. In 2D, it was circles. Here, it's spheres overlaid on an image of neurons. So let's say you have a soma, which is the center of this neurons, uh, you know, and then you put like a series of spheres right around it. These are hollow spheres. And you look at where these spheres intersect with the neurons and how many of them, and that's it. It's as simple as that. So they are centered around the uh, cell body and the number of times you count like the neurons or the branches, you know, they intersect with the sphere. This is what we count and we plot, as simple as that. Now let's quickly jump into the code and see exactly how we can achieve this. And you'll see that I have written quite a bit of this, uh, you know, uh, text here. And that's obviously for you to go through this in detail. But what are we trying to achieve here? Just very similar to the 2D process for 3D, I have included two methods here. One is automatic method. The other one is manual method. By the way, I also updated the 2D part uh, by... Uh, changing it a little bit, but here let's focus on the 3D for now. So the manual method is very straightforward. It's going to open up uh, your X, Y, and Y, Z planes. So for the X, Y image, you can go through Z, right? You can go through the Z slide, uh, slice, and then pick where the max, where you think the SOMA center is. So that defines your Z coordinate for the SOMA center. And then you look at the Y, Z plane, and then you change, play with your X, uh, you know, slider, and then pick which X position, giving you the best, uh, you know, SOMA center. So that defines your X and Z. And Y can be calculated how? Now here, you can actually draw a small rectangle around the SOMA center. Why do I say small rectangle? Because if you just put a spot maybe slightly off, the goal is you put a small rectangle, it tries to find the center of that, and then that gives you the X and uh, uh, Z play, uh, values, but at the same time, it also gives you Y, right? When you pick the center in these two planes and the average of this Y is basically your Y right there. So you have X, Y, and Z. There you go. That's your center. Automatic method is what I prefer, which is basically the code identifies the SOMA by finding the region with the highest intensity. How do we do that? We create, we define a cube of certain size. Uh, I set it to nine by nine by nine, you can change it. So there's a nine pixels by nine pixels by nine pixels cube that goes through your entire volume and it actually calculates the maximum intensity within that and wherever it calculates that, the center of that cube where it finds the highest intensity is what we uh, identify as the center or the SOMA here. So it may work, it may not work, that's why we have manual method. It's still better than uh, how we initially started in the 2D shoal analysis case where we just uh, assume that the pixel with the highest intensity is the center of the SOMA. I think this is a much better approach. This is what I meant by modifying the 2D part, you know. I had to sit and think about, you know, how to 
improve the accuracy of detecting the SOMA center. And then the next part is pretty straightforward. So you have the 3D image tank stack that we binarize using the thresholding method, and then we skeletonize because eventually what we need is a skeletonized uh, 3D structure. And the shoal analysis is again very simple. You kind of define the radius of different spheres. You kind of define those spheres, and then you see where the sphere intersects with your with your basically. Uh, the sphere pixel and the actual pixel, if there is an actual pixel, skeletonized pixel with a value of one, and the sphere pixel with a value of one, if both are one, then that's an intersection, right? So you count how many times you have that, and that's basically your uh, shoal analysis. And there is a lot more uh, for visualization uh, because that helps us in confirming whether the results that we get is you know, in the right direction or not. Okay, so there is a lot more text right there, but that's pretty much it. I'm not sure if there is something that I want to uh, mention. So this, I should have changed this to manual SOMA selection. So this first part is all manual SOMA selection where it opens up the window. So you see these display ones, a part of the code over there, and I use OpenCV to kind of open these, put the text, and then get the coordinates. And that's what's going on here. And uh, once you get the coordinates, all we are trying to do is, of course, this is the code to draw the rectangle and draw the rectangle on the x, y. And then we have, uh, we have uh, what? We get coordinates from all of these, both of these planes. And then the center of this is we are averaging there and the center of y, z we are averaging. So you get like these x and, uh, you know, z and y, uh, uh, bas uh, basically right here, right? So that's, that's the manual way. And the automated way is very straightforward and simple. We use this uniform filter. If I slide this, you should see what exactly it does. From scipy.nd image, it actually calculates the average intensity in a sliding cube window. So you slide this cube, it calculates the average intensity. And we're taking, okay, so you have the uniform and wherever you get the maximum, that is exactly what your uh, X, Y, Z coordinates are. That's pretty much it. And once you get that, uh, here, this is a function that gets the SOMA center. Basically, it looks at whether you picked up, ma you selected manual or auto, and it, it calls the appropriate function right there that returns the center of the SOMA. And then uh, this is just a plotting, visualizing where the center is, because I just want to visually confirm that, hey, it's doing the right thing. And then performing the shoal analysis is basically you have this, uh, you're creating these, uh, these, these spheres and you're looking at the intersection of these. Hey, well, the shell like here and whatever, you know, uh, from your SOMA, if the values are one, if it's one and zero, it doesn't make any sense or it's zero and one, but both cases, if they are one, then we actually get uh, an intersection and you count how many intersections you have, that's it. And everything else is plotting. So I want to look at the 3D skeleton in a 3D plot just to get a quick view and the shell, shell profile of obviously that's what you're doing this entire exercise for and plot the 2D projections so I can see the shell in 2D. So, you know, that's, that's what we are typically used to. And also I'm dumping this uh, neuron with spheres plot into, into Plotly. I think that's the last one here. So we can kind of do some interactive visualization. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure you're all eager to see how this actually works. So let's go ahead. What did I select? Let's go down all the way to the main function. And what did I select? That's a, what did I select? I selected manual, right? So let's do the manual first and then the auto and then end this video. So let's go ahead and run this. It should open, by the way, while it's opening, I should have showed you exactly what I have. This is what I have here. This is the 3D volume. Yeah, it doesn't look like much. It doesn't, oh, sorry. It opened these two, but I just want you to have a quick look at this volume first. This is the raw image. You see how you can see all these neurons in, in, in this plane. Now I can switch to, where is my, where is my Fiji? Let me actually change my plugin to 3D, uh, 3D viewer. It should open a 3D viewer anytime. So you can get a feel for how this volume looks like. And uh, that's okay, Let's. Uh, it's on my other screen. Let me pull this up here. Okay, is it showing up? Okay, there you go. So this is the volume we are working with. You see, that's the neurons. 
okay it's not that fast because i'm recording i'm doing many things on my on my tiny system here but that's the volume now if you ask where did i get this from <laughs> i looked online to get like a good free you know 3d neuron set and i'm not happy with what i saw so i simulated my own neuron if you guys are interested in the code where i simulated this 3d uh, you know, data because I know neurons are, you know, they go, keep growing, they grow in some direction randomly, they have some branches, go ahead and add, add that randomness. So you can simulate your own volume for testing purposes. So that's where I got the volume from. So please, uh, in the in the comments, let me know if you're interested in that part of the code. I don't know if you have a microscope, why you would be interested in that, but who knows. Okay, let me close this. And these two are the windows that it actually opened, my Python program. And as you can see here, it says, hey, press R to reset the selection, Q to finish the selection. So first we need to make a selection. This is a 512 by 512 by 512 volume. So by default, it opened up slice numbers 256, Z and X uh, slice 256. And this is the YZ plane, obviously. And this on the left-hand side is the XY plane. So I, uh, I can actually go through this entire thing and uh, actually see, but I know I placed my SOMA in 256 like the brighter spot right there. So let me just go ahead, click and drag. And also I'll do the same here, click and drag. In your case, you may not have the SOMA center. You will not have the SOMA center. It acts absolutely center of your volume. Okay, so I'm happy with these two. If not, you can press R to redo this, but I'm happy. I'm gonna press Q and now it goes to the next uh, set, you know, step of actually doing the analysis. You see how it says selected SOMA center 256, 255, 256. Not bad, huh? Well, these two 256 came from our selection and this 255 is what it calculated based on the rectangles I provided. So now it's actually performing the actual, you know, skeletonization and all that kind of stuff. So uh, because it's too busy, uh, recording and doing a few other things. It may take a few seconds. It's a large volume, well, relatively large volume for my small system. So I'll pause the video and let's continue as soon as it's done, probably 10, 20 more seconds. Okay, so there you go, it's done. And let's click on the plots. This is why I like my spider IDE. I can see everything right here at one place. And let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, let's move this quite a bit. Okay, so starting with what? Starting with these three, where you can see how it, it let's expand even more, where it put the SOMA center. So obviously we manually picked this in this case. And then the next step, this is the skeletonized image of all the, uh, you know, neurons. And you can see the SOMA at the center. And this is the Scholl analysis, the classic curve that you can uh, expect. And the next one is basically 2D shoal analysis, right? So I just, this is a cross section showing you the cross section of the spheres for each of these planes. And finally, this is where it's actually showing you, again, the same visualization, same thing in 3D. So this is probably what you're after, right? Okay, so that is all manual. Now let's go ahead and do auto. So I'm gonna change this to auto. And now it shouldn't ask me any questions. And I am curious about what it picks as the center. Previously, it picked 256, 255, 256, because that was manual, obviously semi, in a way, mostly manual. So let's go ahead and run this one more time. And it should, as soon as it, it, it goes through the image with a nine by, yeah, cube size nine by nine by nine, it should give us uh, the center. Uh, any second now. And it says 255, 254, 255. That's not bad, right? So Otto is doing a pretty good job. It went through the entire volume and it gave these, uh, this, this as the center. Okay, again, let's wait a few more seconds. Well, I'll pause the video. And once the results are there, we'll have a quick look and done with this video. Okay, it's done. So let's go back and there you go. And let's uh, focus more on the plots. And again, the SOMA center and uh, that's, a, oh, that's a previous one. <laughs> here is the SOMA center and here is again, pretty much the same thing. And here is the new Shoal plot compared to the last one. It should be very similar. I mean, one data point slightly off. Again, it depends on <laughs> if you move one through the space, 
where does that spike show up? There you go. So that's that's uh, that's your results. And of course, once you have everything captured as you know as as a uh, data frame or table, you know all these values, you can you can do more plotting or extract more information. But this is the core of three D actual analysis and i hope you find this to be useful and the code is again freely available look for the link down below under the description let's meet again in the next tutorial with a different topic thank you